first thing I want you to do when you get to your head, and they're not, they're not, uh, they're not assigned, so you can just grab a head anytime, but t please, please take time to scroll through your CT scan, because I'll come around and I'll ask you about your frontoethmoid cells and make sure you, uh, you are doing, doing it right. So this is just finding the eustachian tube, and this is the first time I have ever used this new one from Medtronic, which is kind of cool. It's a rigid balloon. Um, I believe we have the striker balloons here as well. Sonia, if we do, just give me the thumbs up. And uh, you're welcome to try either one. So, yeah, this is, does it advance? Oh yes, that's right. So this is this is. Let's see if I can do this here. This is the malleable one that allows you to bend it by your hand, and it gives a pretty nice angle. We'll see how it goes. Again, it's always fun to try something for the first time on international TV, <laughs> and pretty straightforward. Different from the other ones you're going to be used to. You don't. There's no guide wire, so. There you go. And it just fall, falls in when you're in the right path. Again, very. this is just finger touch. And again, I'm not going to dilate it. We're just going to do it like that. So um, this balloon will be up here. I think there's one other balloon around. And uh, there is no navigation on this balloon because it's pretty easy to know where you're, where you're going, where you're not going. The next one, and I do prefer the image guidance for the sphenoid. It's going to be pretty hard to miss that sphenoid. And I like it because it really lets you know where you are. So when it's, <laughs> so this is interesting. Uh, going in through the right side, again, you can see the os right there. You know where we are. And clearly, if you look at the nav, I'm not in the left sphenoid. I haven't gone through the inner sinus septum. <clears throat> so if, let's say, let's go through this side, make it a little bit more challenging because there's a septal deviation here. First thing I would do in this case is do a gentle lateralization of the middle turbinate. And I'm just going to push it over a little bit to create some space. There's a natural loss right there. So I don't want to ruin the dissection for my colleagues. But let's put it back where I want to go. And if I'm doing this in, in clinic, I'm going to do the sphenoid dilation first. Then we're going to switch to the frontal sinus. And, <clears throat> excuse me, again, we're going to medialize that. Pardon? You're going to do, oh, sure, okay. Yep, they're going to dilate the other side. So we'll come to this side. And this is just, this is right here. Once you know you can medialize that middle turbinate, you're going to have a very easy procedure. If the patient doesn't tolerate this, you know you need a little bit more anesthesia. Where's the frontal? Thank you. And so if we look at, let's see, where are we on the nav? Do you have us plugged in there? So as you can see, we're red, right? The red crosshairs on the nav meaning, mean that we are not, there we go, it, it's green. And the question is, will it pick up? We plugged in right now, John? Not yet, no. So I always, one, one key when I'm doing this is, is, you know, the posterior belly of the digastric is known as the resident friend. I call the middle turbinate the resident friend for frontal sinus surgery. If you, as long as you don't go through the middle turbinate, you're going to be safe. This is going to be it right Oh, there we go. So now you can see we're posterior. So then we get to come anterior. Ooh, that's going to be tough. Yeah, I know, but that does not feel, that is not, and one, there's, so a couple of things. This is a good opportunity to talk about, is my navigation working right? There's some key landmarks that don't change. So you come in and you touch the floor of the nose. If the nav shows that you're in the mouth and you can see you're on the floor of the nose, you know you're off, all right? That's not moving. The other thing that doesn't move very much is the nasopharynx. And, you know, there's a little bit of adenoid tissue. So anterior, posterior, I look like I'm, Pretty good right there, looking at the sagittal. So coming on back, um, I don't know why we can't get this to navigate right here. 
And it definitely helps to have a 30 degree endoscope on. We have a zero degree right now. And that is going to help us because if I really drop my hand, now you start to see where we're going to be. And for whatever reason, Josh, or John, sorry, we're gonna try a different one. Oh, 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 maybe. So we have this one here. And again, I probably should have talked to you all through the, through the scan. And we have this one up here. And that's gonna get us to the promised land. So looking at the sagittal, this is the most important view. Not the coronal, not the axial, the sagittal. We see anterior to the green crosshairs. This is a, a super auger frontal cell. That's right anterior to me. So it's a, it's a cell above the auger, it's, which makes it a super auger cell, but it's going into the frontal sinus. So it's a super auger frontal. That's important because we know the natural drainage pathway of that frontal sinus is going posterior to that cell. And that's a very important thing. So we can get right up there and we can dilate that and that's gonna squish those cells. Again, sometimes um, I'm gonna wanna dilate inferiorly first to create a little bit more access and then I'm gonna advance it further so I can get that, the tightest part between the top most superior part of that super auger frontal cell and the skull base. And then the final one, by this point, the maxillary is usually pretty easy. And two ways, uh, some people like being, uh, going in with it facing up, some people like going in with it facing down. Uh, if one way works and the other doesn't, and just see what works. A lot of times the bola gets in the way, and so sometimes you have to crush the bola to give you some space to get in. I prefer going in with the balloon pointed up and just hooking it like it's a ball tip seeker. And then it's not straight across. It, the os comes down to about eight o'clock on the patient right and about four o'clock on the patient left. And you can see you're nice and in there. So again, it's, it's a move. Even with regular sinus surgery, you're rarely going straight across because if you have a low hanging orbit, that's where you get trouble. So always come in, you can pull that unsented anteriorly, but go in at a eight o'clock or four o'clock trajectory. All right, 